Welcome everyone um, to today's Art Stop. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Lucy Aaron. I am a museum educator here at the museum. And today we're going to be focusing on the work of one of my personal favorite artists, again, Alice Neal. So the past couple art stops, I've been making a concerted effort to focus on the artwork of women artists in our collection that deserve attention. And Alice Neal would be one of these artists. If you're not familiar with this exhibition, this is Behold America. It is a unique collaboration of three institutions, our museum, the Timken, and the Museum of Contemporary Art, La Jolla. So it's a very unique ex exhibition. It's going on through February. And it's creating a dialogue of American art um, from way back up until right now. So I encourage you to take a look around after this and, and see what there is to see. What, right now we're standing in sort of a portrait area right here. And so like I said, I'm going to be focusing on the work of Alice Neal. So Alice Neal is a really interesting artist. She lived much of her life working as an artist in obscurity, which is actually a very familiar story for many women artists. Um, why did this happen? Well, of course, because women artists were not given a lot of the attention they deserved. Um, but also because Alice Neal focused on portraiture and portraiture was not considered to be one of the more interesting, thriving genres during the time that she worked. So this portrait was painted in the late 1930s, circa 1937. And of course, abstract expressionism and other art movements like that were taking the lead, taking all of the glory during this time. So Alice Neal was not as well known, but she continued to paint portraiture nonetheless because it's what she loved and it's what she <laughs> believed in. And eventually this did pay off later in her life. She did find recognition. So her tenacity was, was really worthwhile. So this portrait is painted circa 1937 and the subject is Mildred Myers Olden. And I think we can really see in this particular portrait Alice Neal's attempt to capture the personality and the sort of inner spirit of her subjects. And I think that this portrait in particular also reflects something about Alice Neal herself. And we can get a sense of what Alice Neal was like as well, which I will explain in just a little bit. The context for this particular piece in the 1930s, this is one of her earlier works. So 1937, she was sort of painted through the 70s, um, sometimes better known for her, her work, but always portraits or figures throughout her career. But in her early career, she lived in New York, and in the late 1930s, I think about 1938, she moved from Greenwich Village to Spanish Harlem. And at that point in her career, she started painting people that she would see every day on the street. She had neighbors, they were Puerto Ricans, very diverse community. She painted a lot of left-wing artists and writers and workers, and sometimes just strangers. So she was fascinated by the people in her community. And she said that of her inspiration that she found in New York, and I'll quote here, she said, I love to paint people torn to shreds by the rat race in New York. So as a result, her portraits have this kind of unflinching honesty and sometimes very confrontational. A lot of times they were nudes. So a lot of her later works there were a series of nude portraits as well. But this portrait, of course, is a little different. This is, this is a, an upper class lady here. And we get a sense of that same sentiment, though. The confrontation, sort of bold, individual personality of, of this woman. This is Mildred Myers Olden, and there's very little known about her, at least as far as I have been able to research. She was the wife of Stanley K. Olden, who bequested this work to the museum in 1991. So, Mildred and Stanley Olden, we know they were friends with Alice Neal. They both lived in New York. They did not live in Spanish Harlem, but they became friends with Neal. And they were a couple that was very wealthy. They 
we're into business. And actually, Stanley Olden works at a publisher called Equinox Cooperative Press in New York. And it was a very small publisher, but they published some important works by uh, William Faulkner and the biography of William Randolph Hearst. And the Oldens met there, I believe, and Mildred Myers at the time was, had just started working at Equinox Publishers. And she became the sort of right arm of Stanley Olden in business. And the two worked together. They did the bookkeeping and the treasury for the, the press. And later they married. And she was 19 years younger than him, which you know, was quite common at that time, seems to be the case. And they traveled a lot. They were very worldly. They took a couple trips to Europe, um, across the oceans. And later they moved to La Jolla, which is how we ended up with this work. So Stan Stanley Olden ended up giving it to the museum when he had lived in, after he lived in La Jolla. But otherwise, the rest of what we can infer about her is what Neil shows us here. So we can tell she was very fashionable. She was very fashionably dressed for the time. This very wide hat, jaunty hat off to the side, her striped suit, her jewelry, red nails, red kind of longer pointy nails, and she's holding her cigarette, which was again very fashionable at the time for women to be smokers in the 1930s. And just to give you a sense of, I love her hat. I can't imagine wearing it and how it would feel, kind of falling off. But just to give you a sense of how hats were in style during this time, I have a, a couple of magazine covers here that show you these glamorous, large contraptions that women would wear. So if you'd like to take a closer look at that, you can do so afterwards. Um, so. The other thing is we know that this is pretty much what she looked like because Neil said that she would paint as close to a likeness as possible as she could get of her subjects. And she was very good at this. She said of her process, and here's another quote, she said, I liked it first to be art, so dividing up the canvas is one of the most exciting things for me. And then I like it not only to look like the person, but to have their inner character as well. And I think it's clear that, that Neil captured the character of this woman in this portrait. And another very important facet to Neil's work is a concept of capturing the spirit of the times. And she called this Zeitgeist, which is actually a theory that was um, developed by the German philosopher Hegel. And in this concept, Art is a reflection of the time in which it's created. So the artist can never create artwork that would reflect a different time, because they're working in that time. So that is the essence of their artwork. And Neil herself, of course, also said she, she likes a painting to look like it's from the time in which it's created. So she was very distinct about that. She doesn't like to get stuck in an era. So her portraits of the 30s, she wanted them to look like they were in the 30s, not in another time and so on. So back to the concept of the inner character or the spirit that Neil sought to capture, I think this is what really gives her work a psychological dimension. And it, sometimes it can be very deep and very revealing. And she often spoke of this, her interest in the psychology of the inner workings of the mind. She said, quote, whether I am painting or not, I have this overweening interest in humanity. Even if I'm not working, I'm still analyzing people. I could have been a great psychiatrist, but it is more fun being an artist. And I would agree with her on that. No offense if there's any psychiatrists here. Um, so the psychological depth to her work really shines through in portraits such as this and is what makes her work, I think, so strong and so lasting. So the process of delving into one's mind and inner persona is reflected in her work. And that sometimes I would think this could be quite taxing on the artist. And she did comment on this as well. She said uh, of painting a portrait, I go so out of myself 
and into them that after they leave, I sometimes feel like an untenanted house. So she completely puts herself into these portraits. And at this point now, we can kind of talk about why it is that I think you can see Neil's personality herself reflected in this work. And Neil was also a very tough and individual personality. She lived a very bohemian life in New York um, because she was not very well discovered as an artist. And she had a very difficult life. She overcame a lot of struggles in her life. She was a single mother. Um, her first child died before the age of one of diphtheria. Her second child, her husband at the time, divorced her and took her child with him to Cuba. So she then suffered this mental breakdown and was hospitalized and it actually was put in the suicidal ward at the Pennsylvania um, Mental Hospital. And during the time in this institution, she created a lot of, was allowed to create art, and um, her drawings and paintings of this time are very haunting. So if you get a chance to look at her other works during this time, you'll get a sense of what the turmoil was that was going on in her mind. So, she continued to create art, though, through this, and after she was released from the hospital in her next relationship, things did not improve here. She got involved with a drug-addicted sailor, and he proceeded to, in a rampage, destroy, slash, 60 of her paintings, and burned something like, I think it was a hundred or several hundred of her sketches and watercolors. So. Uh, he was definitely not a winner, and he they later split. Um, good thing that she realized that that was not going in the right direction. And uh, she continued to have some affairs and, and later relationships and had several more children. So she had a couple sons. So she had this really interesting um, struggles in her life, but yet she persevered. She was a very strong woman. I think, you know, of course, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. She came out a much stronger personality. And I want to show you at this point, I want to show you a, an image I found of Neil, which I think kind of reminds me of this portrait here. So here is a photograph of a young Alice Neil. The same, similar confrontational gaze. You know, she's defiant. She was very fierce personality. Uh, she was born in about 1900, so she was 37 when she painted this picture. This was earlier in her career. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, amid all of this personal drama, she continued to paint um, and thrived. And another quote of Neil is her struggles, but her choices that she made. She said, I did my best to have everything. Choices are difficult. But art was the most important thing. Almost everything else took a back seat. Painting was more than a profession. It was also an obsession. I had to paint. So fiercely determined, she continued to paint throughout her career. But during the last decades of her career, she did find success. So in the 1960s, she reintegrated with the mainstream New York art scene, and she moved back um, into Greenwich. And she painted portraits at this time of Andy Warhol, of other figures in the art world, important gallery owners. I believe she painted Robert Smithson as well, young Robert Smithson. So she continued to paint, and then at this point started finding success. And I believe she also was given an award by Jimmy Carter, I think in 1979. She was awarded um, for her art. But yet, at this time, she also maintained her practice of painting political figures, um, artists of the women's movement, women's rights, black artists. Um, she, she was very aware of the impact of her work and how it could have an effect on the community and the art world in general. And she really stuck true to what she had aspired to. So I think that's very inspiring about her, is that she painted what she believed in. And it eventually paid off. And she also later influenced her work has influenced many artists, uh, many portrait 
painters and artists who painted the figure. So her work was is very impactful. She's one of the really leading artists, I think, of women artists of the 20th century. So I'll leave you with one last thing here, my f perhaps one of my favorite Alice Neal quotes. And um, by the way, a lot of these are taken from, there's a documentary about Alice Neal that was created by her grandson, Andrew Neal. And it's just, I think, pretty riveting. Um, it's available on Netflix, but there is a very long wait. So you have to be very patient if you want to get it. Um, so my, my, my favorite quote of Alice Neal, I think, really sums up her this kind of strong, independent, defiant personality. She said at one point in this documentary, art is not as stupid as human conversation. So um, I'll leave you with that. I hope this art stop has been um, inspirational and informative. And thank you very much. Thank you.